So happy Sabbath, everyone. It's really good to be in here with you and also to have the opportunity of sharing a little bit of the gospel with everyone. You know, uh, one of the things that I'm going to carry with me is sing a little louder because, you know, uh, as I was sitting here, I was cold, I was worried about how, how can I share the things that the Lord had showed to me in a second language. And sometimes it, it seems a little bit uncomfortable to share something in, in, in something that maybe you cannot find the right words, you know? And then I, I was sitting here talking with God and I, I, I thought, I need to sing a little louder. I need to, to, to understand that you are in charge of all the things, right? So I will invite you to do something different today. I want you to do something that maybe will bring you in uncomfortable too. Okay, so we can share the same feeling here, right? So <laughs> I, w- I would like you to look to the person next to you and I want you to say to that person, you are really important to God. So look to the person besides you and say, you're really important to God. <laughs> you know, sometimes we need to get out of our comfortable to make, some, make a difference. Sometimes it looks a little bit strange to talk to the person next to you, but I think it's the start of a relationship. We are supposed to be a family. We're supposed to be the family of God, right? So uh, I believe that God is going to be pre- present here with us and he will share his words. It's not my words. I will just share the things that he's showing to us through his Bible, right? So I will invite you one more time to to have a word of prayer, and we can ask God to be with us here and ask him to teach us what is his his willing, right? So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for for being here with us today. We're going to open your word, and we're going to learn the things that you led to us. So please guide me, help me to find the right words, help me to trust that you are the one in charge of all the things. And I ask also that you clean our mind and make us able to understand all the things the way that you want. Please be with us, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, I will just open here the, the pr- presentation with you guys. I don't know if you, you find already the, the presentation there. So, I would like to... Uh, to talk a little bit about what does it mean to be a Christian. You know, it, it's something that sometimes annoys, uh, it's not, maybe it's not the right word, but you, you will understand me, it's something that annoys me for a long time, you know, because I was not a Christian, I didn't grow up as a Christian. I actually didn't believe in, in, in God and maybe I didn't believe ab- about churches, you know? And then God bring all his message to me uh, through the Bible and it was really impressive to me. I, I was really impressed. And the question is, what does makes me a Christian? What does it mean to be a Christian? Because, you know, the person who didn't grow up in the churches, usually they don't like churches, right? And the first impression that I have about being in a church is people judging me, people looking at me, people maybe faking that they're happy, but they're not, you know? And I had a lot of prejudice against being in a church, and I would never imagine that some years later I will be preaching in one of them. So uh, it was weird for me. But the thing is, what makes us a Christian? You know, last Sabbath we were here, we had the communion together where we share the bread, we share the, uh, the grape juice also to remind us a little bit of the promise that God made to us, that Jesus made to us, all the sacrifice that Jesus made to us. And he said that if we believe in him, we're going to be saved, right? Oh, next one. Yeah, I found it. Thank you. So I will bring some uh, reviews about the last sermon. Uh, we were here and we find out that Jesus said that if we believe in Jesus, we are Christians. We have salvation through when we believe in Jesus, right? The second thing is, when you become a, a Christian, his life, the life of Christ, becomes part of the believer's life. And I, was, I will take two parts of it in the last sermon. Like, his principles and teachings are going to make part of ours, and also his love and grace will be, become 
part of us. Everyone knows about it. But the problem is, okay, if just believing in Christ and understanding his principles and his love and grace will bring us to heaven, so why do we talk about judgment? Why do we talk about people who are not going to be saved and people who are going to be saved? What is the, and, and something is strange for us, because sometimes we don't understand things the same way that people understand in the old times, right? Because um, sometimes I ask people, when, when I'm talking with them and I'm teaching the Bible to, to people, I ask them, do you believe that the, the, the religion on Jesus' time uh, is the same as ours? And of course, the answer is not. We had a lot of syncretisms of beliefs during the history. We take some cultures from Brazil, we take some cultures from Rome, we, we, we take, take some cultures from other countries and we mix a little bit with the, the, the things in the Bible and sometimes we, we struggle to understand the things that God really wants us to understand. So when we read at first the word believe, we understand that, oh, I know that he is, exists, so that's fine, I'm saved. But the problem is, it's not just about it. Some people misunderstood a little bit about what is the meaning of believing in Christ and understand about being a Christian. So, to believe, right? What is the problem with the thing to believe? Some people understand believing in a totally different way. Like some people be, understand that when they come to the church, it's like buying stocks. If I offer the church $200, I'm going to receive $400 from God. You know, it's all about blessings. I can give an offering to God and he will make me richer. Uh, it's, he will make me, uh, uh, my things are going to, to grow, you know. So people understand sometimes that being a Christian is to improving the things that I have and how much I'm going to, to have in the future, you know. Other people understand that being a Christian, it's like finding a lucky charm. Like they understand if I'm a Christian, I'm not going to be uh, sick, I'm not going to have, a prob have problems, I'm not going to have problems in my love life, I'm not going to have a paraglide accident, just kidding, okay. <laughs> so we understand that it's not about a lucky charm. We understand that bad things happen also with Christians. So maybe we understand things in a wrong way. Some people just look for the gospel. They look for Jesus because they think that all their problems are going to be solved right now. And sometimes we, understand, we don't understand the purpose of the, 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 the gospel, right? So to believe in the Bible, there are some things that I got uh, reading some scriptures, and I would like to invite you to take your Bible. I don't, I don't use the verses here because I know that uh, we're not used anymore to open the Bible, but I want you to search a little bit in your Bibles, right? So I would like everyone to, when you open your Bible, it's God talking to you, it's not myself, right? So please open your Bibles on Revelations chapter 4, verse 11. You know, my reading in English is really bad. That's why I'm going to ask someone here to help me. So please, someone with the voice of the thunder, please help me. Can someone read for me Revelations chapter 4, verse 11? Can I have a volunteer? Okay. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. By your will, they were created and have their being. Thank you. The first thing of believing in Christ is believing that God is our creator. He is my creator. So believing in Christ, part of it is believing that he is my creator. He created all the things in this world. He made all the, the beautiful things that we can see. Uh, of course, this world is full of sin, but all the beautiful things that we have, it's f uh, were made by his hand, right? The second thing is on Job chapter 12, I, I already have a volunteer there, Job chapter 12, verse 12 and 13. So please... Can you extend? No, not this way. <laughs> so I want one volunteer to read this, this part of the scripture for us. 
Job chapter 12. Don't worry, take your time. I want you to read the scripture today. Ready? With the ancient is wisdom and in length of days understanding. With him his wisdom and strength he hath counsel and understanding. So one of the things that I, I found amazing is from the three main characteristics of God. Some people doubt, uh, doubt about his wisdom. We, for sure we understand that God is powerful. We, for sure we understand that God is love. But some people struggle to understand that God is wise. You know what? If you ask a person, what would you do if you were God just for one day? People will say, ah, I, I will solve all the problems. I will make people happier. I will do something. But if your answer is different, then I will do the same thing that he's doing right now. It's because you adopted his right. And sometimes we don't understand how God is wise, that all the things that uh, he, he let us um, live, it's for our good. His plans are better than ours. The Bible says that his plans, his ways are greater than our ways. So that's amazing when we understand that God is wiser. He knows more than me. If I believe that he's my creator and I believe that he's wiser, what I'm going to do? I'm going to give my life to him. I'm going to understand that he's the one in charge of all the things. I'm going to understand that he's the only way that I can follow through safe. You know? So that's really important that to believe in God. It's believing that he's my creator. He's the wiser one. He's the one who can guide my life. And that's why I'm giving my life to him, right? So we say that he is the source of all knowledge. Right? And one more verse we're going to read, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. So please, those who are at home also, you can put in pause here in the video and you can look in your Bible and read with us. It's really important. And also, I would challenge you, if, if you're watching at home or maybe later for those who are here, you can search for all the chapters also to study in, uh, for deep answers about this the situations, right? So, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. Can I have another volunteer? Please. For you, Oops. Right. So, we see that he bought me, he bought us with his blood. He paid the price for us. That means that we don't belong, that we don't belong to ourselves. We understand that if I believe in Christ, I believe that he paid the price for me, and I'm not doing the things anymore for myself. Sometimes we have this uh, misbelief. I, I, I don't know if this is the right word, misbelief. I, I can say maybe the wrong belief that we are the center of the gospel. That God needs, uh, uh, some people will understand that if I'm a Christian, God uh, must uh, make me happy. You know, because I'm the prince of this world. If God is the king, I'm the prince. I need to have the, the wealthy and all the, the good things. And we, we believe that uh, if, you are, if you are full of faith, you have that um, advertising family, you know? The families that you see in the advertisement, that everyone is happy, everyone is healthy, everyone is uh, like eating the, 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 the best that they can, they have the, the, the best car, the best house. So if we think that being a Christian, uh, we need to have all these things, so probably the prophets have failed. Probably the disciples have failed. Because we don't see them in this kind of situations here in the earth. We, can, we, we can't see them fighting to have like a comfortable life. You know, something that looks like su su success for the world. So that's why when we talk about the Bible, it says that the gospel is cr it's craziness for those who are in the earth. It's craziness. It's, it's just, it just doesn't make sense. How can a person be happy while in prison? How can a person be happy while persecuted? 
How can a person be happy facing a lot of problems? How can a person be happy even with all the bad things that are happening here on the earth? That's crazy. But the thing is, they understand that their lives are not for themselves. They start to believe in Christ. They believe that this life is just something fast. They believe that we're going back home. They believe that the, our mission here is to spread the gospel, is to tell everybody that we, we have this opportunity of coming back home. And it's free because Jesus paid the price for us. So that's why it's crazy. But it's also amazing. It's also amazing because if you look through this way, all your problems, they, they don't make sense. You know, all the problems that you're facing right now, maybe you are sad, maybe you are, you are struggling with your partner, maybe, maybe you are struggling in your work, maybe you are struggling in your life or even with healthy. Maybe you're, 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 you're struggling here in this world. But Jesus said, don't be sad. Because I already overcome this world. So Jesus is coming to take us back home soon. Amen. And we are happy because of it. We don't need to be worried about the problems that we have here. Of course, they hurt. Of course, they make us sad. But we have a better promise. We know that all these things are going through. And we know that we need to advise as many people as we can and tell them that Jesus is coming soon. That is about believing in God. So, how can this, it, it's everything beautiful when we talk about it, but the problem is how this can be part of my life. It's hard, you know, I'm, I'm a pastor, yeah, but I, I still struggle. I still have problems in my home, in my home. sometimes my, my wife and I, we don't agree in some things. And it's common because we are humans and we have sin. Sometimes I can have bad feelings. Sometimes I, I, can, I can be really bad. Yeah, I hope that you don't, don't meet me in, in my, my worst situation. But because I'm a sinner. And the only, only thing that is different with me is the things that Christ are making for me. The only thing that I can give him is giving my heart and ask, please God, do something through me. Because I'm not good. I don't know how to love people. I don't know how to, 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 to be the way you want. That's why I want to deliver my heart to you. And it's amazing. Because when time comes, you can see that Jesus is trying to transform you. And sometimes you, you start to doubt of yourself. Like, man, I'm not this way, but why I'm, so, I, I'm caring so much for people? It's because Jesus is changing me. It's because something is changing me because I'm making him to become part of me right but the question is how can i do it again first peter chapter 2 verse 1 2 and 9 it's a jump right so we're going to read together first peter first peter chapter 2 verse 1 2 and 9 So, it's easy to read, but it's hard to live, right? So, I want you to read with me all the things that God wants from us. It says, therefore, read yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. And if you go now for verse 9, it says something that God is waiting from us. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So God is calling us to be different. God is calling us to be away from the, the things from the world, right? When we talk about being saint or something that is holy, we need to understand that it's not something perfect, you know? Because we have this um, misbelief also. I will use this word later. You can tell me if I'm using it right or not. So uh, maybe the wrong belief, right, is 
is seen holy as something that it's so perfect, it's flawless, you know, but it's not the meaning. Holy is something that is made for, 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 a, for a purpose, like this. I have here two people who wear glasses, right? So Reese and my wife Claudia. If I ask you both to take off your glasses and change it, do you think it's going to work the same way? Why not? Because your glasses were made only for you, and her glasses were made only for her. So they are like holy for you. They are made like they are split it apart. They are made specifically for you. So when God said that we need to be a holy nation, it's because our purpose is only for Him. So we are split. We, we're special. We're um, we are the ones who are His ambassadors. You know, the ones who are going to tell Him doing the things that He He wants us to do for people. You know, so we are a different person. We are called to be a holy nation. So God sometimes he wants to do something for someone and he's going to use you for this. So sometimes we want, it's so funny when we believe as a church, but we say, oh God, I'm seeing that person. He's so, um, he's needing a lot of help. Please send someone to help them. And then God look at us and say, man, I expected you to go there. You know, sometimes we want people to do the thing, and we want God to do our service. You know, and God is calling us to do this for the others. Second Corinthians chapter 5. So I want you to read with me. Second Corinthians. Everyone already found it? Amen. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm the only one here. Okay, found it. <laughs> Separate, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 say, says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, right? The old has gone. The new is here. That's good news. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So when people ask me, I, I don't have a ministry. I, uh, I would like to make part of one of the ministry in the church and I tell them, you know that God already gave you a ministry? Amen. I'm telling you, you already have a ministry. You don't need to wait for Pastor Mark or for me or for anybody here, for one of the church liberators to come to you and say, hey, I want you to make part of a ministry. You already have a part of a ministry, Amen. right? And God is calling you to be part of the ministry of reconciliation. And what, is, what the, does that mean? That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he was committed to us the message of reconciliation. So our job here in this world is not coming to people and say, hey, Jeff, you should stop to drink coca. You know, that's sin. Or come to a person and say, hey, you should start to dress this way. You, you, you need to dress different. Or come to another person and say, hey, you should start smoking. You stop, stop smoking, right? You should do this. You should. God is not calling you to this. God is not calling you to show people their sins. God is calling you to say, hey, God wants to have a relationship with you. He's calling you to this. Do you want to come? So God, because the sin makes us apart from God, you know? Sin makes us a part of God. And God is saying, I want to have this relationship back to you. So please go to the people and tell them that I want to have a relationship with them. And the only thing that I, I'm here today is to say, God wants to have a relationship with you. I know that sometimes it feels that you are lonely. We're living in crazy times. We're living in, in a time that we fake that we are fine, but we are not. Everyone, even the ministries of God, they're feeling lonely, and we know about it. 
Sometimes we just come here and say, hey, happy Sabbath, and we don't, we don't see each other in the, the rest of the week, and sometimes it feels that we're not a family, but we can change it. I don't know how, my, how many of you are tired of this, this time that we're faking that we're fine. I'm tired. Are you feeling tired of this? I, I want to break off these masks. I, I don't want to, to dress this mask anymore, you know? I, I want you to show the, 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 the people, who am I, who am I, you know? I, I, I would like to have a tr true relationship with people. And I know that you feel the same. I know that you feel the same. It's just society makes us behave in a different way. We need to, sh to show ourselves so polite and fake that we're fine. We're, we need to, t today is so weird, like we can't, answer people's message as soon as they come because we need to make them wait a little bit because it can, can look a little bit weird. So we, we receive a message and then we say, I will wait a little bit until answer them because they will think that I'm, I'm free. So people are crazy, you know? We're behaving in a crazy situation. We're creating a, 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 a weird behavior in society. And that's true. And God has invited us to having a true relationship. God has invited us to be, to be real friends, to work as a family for the good of the others outside of the church. You know why people are tired of coming to church? You know why people are not coming to church anymore? It's not because they don't believe in Christ. It's just because they are tired of going to a place, sit there and going out without knowing anyone. People are missing true relationship. And that's why we need to be a family. We need to be together. We need to talk. We need to, to, to face our problems. Because sometimes we try to fake that we, oh, everything is all right, but it's not. We need to talk. And that's good. So we receive the ministry of reconciliation. We need to be a family, right? And... One of the things that I got from the, the last sermon is the way it, his, it, it, it ends uh, with this phrase saying that his love and grace must be assimilated by the church. We need to be as Christ. Christ is the, was the one that he was not worried about what people will think of him if he talked with a woman. He was not worried about what people will think about him if he tell them the truth. You know, I'm not saying that he, he was trying to throw the truth in their faces, you know? He was just coming and being, he loved everybody. And he was not afraid of what they are going to think or not. So sometimes we don't do good things because we're afraid of people. We say, if I'm trying to be nice with this person, they will think that I'm dumb. And sometimes we, do, we don't let God work on us. We're, we are holding the Holy Spirit. We, we don't want to do a huge thing as a church because maybe people will think that we are strange and we need to show them that, that we are reasonable. So uh, I think that we, we should stop to doing this, this kind of things. You know, I'm not going to talk about Jesus to everybody because they will think that I'm a freak. And that's weird. That's weird. We are so worried about people that we, we stop to do good things for people. That's... It's a paradox, you know? We stop to do good things because we don't want, us, we don't want them to, to think bad about us. That's weird, you know? We, we need to understand that a perfect church, it may be it's totally different about what we really think about it. Yeah, I know, maybe I can sound a little bit red and then I'm just trying to find the, the right words, but you're getting the message, right? So when we're talking about Perfect church. That's something that sometimes is sad. I want you to imagine a perfect church. Try to stop a little bit and imagine a perfect church. What is a perfect church for you? Some people will say that a perfect church is the one who searches for God every day. The perfect church is the one who do all the lessons from the Sabbath school. The perfect church is the, the one who, who prays most. The perfect church is the, the one who um, really um, are devoted to Christ, doing all the things uh, that he commanded us. 
But the problem is sometimes we don't understand what really God wants from us. If we do all the things that he asked us without purpose, without the, the right meaning, it doesn't make sense. Because if you look to the old church, the church when uh, the Pharisees' church, some people say that they are hypocrites. But if you look to them, they were doing this because they believed that it was right. You know, the old church, like uh, the old Bibles, I, I would share something to you. Uh, in the old Bibles, between the New Testament and the old, the, the old Testament and the New Testament, they have like two sheets in blank, right? So it was four pages in, in blank. Why? Because it was the period that God stayed without talking with them. It, was, uh, it, it, it is like, um, I'm trying to find the right word. I'm going to find it. It was like, a, not, not a sign of, it was a symbol, right? Of uh, each page, it was a symbol of 100 years that God didn't talk with them. So from the last prophet until the Christ coming, we have 400 years that God didn't send anyone to talk with the people. And they were, they were trying to figure out why. Because we have all this story, right? They went through Egypt and they forgot about God's commandment. God take them back from the Egypt. They, they teach them again, but they start to follow other gods. They start to follow their own will and they do bad things. They go in captive for, uh, with Babylon. God take them back and try to teach them again, but they also go through their ways and then God said, okay, if you want to go through your ways, you can go. I'm not going to talk with you guys anymore. And when they didn't have any prophets anymore, they, they said, okay, what should we do to make God talk with us again? Oh, God said that we need to keep the commandments. So they start to keep all the commandments the right way, but God didn't send any prophet to them anymore. And they say, what we're doing wrong. So we need to make it deeper. We need to make things perfect. So they start to make a list of a, a lot of rules for the Sabbath and for the other commandments to trying to be perfect and trying to get God's attention. But the problem is they forgot what, is, what was the meaning of the gospel. And sometimes we can uh, do the same mistake nowadays. We can uh, search God, we want to hear God, we want to, to listen to Him, and we do a lot of things to, to Him in the church, and we say, why God is not talking with me? And sometimes it's because we're losing the, the main purpose of being a Christian. You know, I want you to open the Bibles on Isaiah chapter 58. When I read chap Isaiah chapter 58, I, I start to, to look at the church with a different, the way I, I understand, I understood church need to change, you know? Maybe the English version, I, I see this, it, it says a little bit different from the Portuguese, but uh, you're going to get the, where I want to, to be with you. So the message is about a time where God asked Isaiah to, to go to the church and don't be afraid because he had a message to the church and it was really urgent. He needed to go to the church and tell them that they, they were in sin. So imagine that's really hard. Maybe you, if, Imagine if God said to you, I want you to go to the San Francisco Central Church and tell everybody that they are in sin and I don't, don't want to listen to them anymore. That's hard, right? Trying to imagine if you come here, hey, all of you, I want to tell you that you are in sin. It's hard, right? But that was really important. So God says to, said to, to, to Isaiah, he said, shout it aloud, do not hold back. I want you to do it. I don't want you to, to, to do a step back. I want you to go there and talk with the church. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and that the descendants of Jacob their sins. That's hard. For day after day, they seek me out. Man, that, that breaks me because if you imagine a church in sin, you think that maybe they are away from God. But here the second verse say that they seek God day after day. So what a church who seeks God every day 
but they are in sin. What's, what's the problem? I want to listen. And they say, they seem eager to know my ways. Or they want to know the ways of God. That's weird. They, they're not doing this by force. You know, they, they really want to know God. They're seeking for, for God, God's way every day. And why, man, if they are doing this and God is sad with them, who am I? Who am I? Maybe I'm not seeking God every day. Maybe I'm not eager to know his ways. So uh, it seems here as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the command of its God. The problem is they, maybe they think that they are doing the right things, but they, they're not. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fast, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Man, they were fasting for God. They were searching God every day. But God said that they're not doing right. And I was, say, I was really worried when, when I started to read it. I, I thought, maybe if they have problems, I'm in a bad situation. You know? But it says, Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard, heard on high. You know, sometimes we, we ask Jesus, you know, nowadays, if you look to um, most Christians, you know that sometimes our prayers are all about ourselves. We ask God for a better job. We ask God to solve our problems. We ask God to have a better um, companion. We ask God to have a, a, all, all the best from this earth. We are always asking God things for ourselves. And we want the others to do our work, our work, you know? Like sometimes we, we're talking about the gospel and we, we expect that the missionaries were going to preach the gospel. That's fine. We want the, the, the church to be cleaner, so, oh, we need to, 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 to maybe hire someone to, to come here and clean, you know? We want uh, better music, so have you thought about asking someone professional to go there? Or something like that, oh, I don't like the way they sing. Maybe, can we find a better singer? We want others to do all the things perfect for us. We want God to, to serve us all the time. But we don't want to be with him. We don't want to do the things with him. God is calling us to be his co-workers. Amen. We have the pleasure of making part of the, the preaching of the gospel. God is calling us to a mission. God is calling us to, to help people outside. And we want God to do all the things for us. The church can be an amazing place, can be beautiful, can be amazing, can have a lot of amazing programs with a lot of blast music and all the things. But if, if we go outside and we don't blast people here in San Francisco, what is the purpose of this meeting? It's nothing. So as a church, our our purpose is not coming here every Sabbath just to worship. Our purpose is to find strength here in our Father's house to go outside and finish His work. So I'm not saying for you that it's wrong to be rich. I'm not saying for you that it's wrong to have a good job. I'm not saying to you that it's wrong to have a good wife, a good family, or something amazing in your, in your life. That's not wrong, okay? No problems. We have also, we know that the prophets, the, the, the uh, disciples, they didn't have like amazing life, but we have also Solomon, we have also David, we have a lot of people who were wealthy also in, in service of God. But the thing is, what is the purpose of your dreams? Are you dreaming with Christ? Are you having plans with Christ? If I want to be a doctor, am I doing just this just because I have a better house or because I want to reach people and, and tell them about the true doctor, the one who can save their lives? 
Am I being a psychologist because I just want to be recognized on the, 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 on the, the academics uh, area or I want to do this because I want to reach people and tell them about Jesus? Uh, am I being a, a, a person who is working wherever you want? Like I'm working in the supermarket. Okay, I want to be in the supermarket. Okay, I got a service there. But what is my purpose? Just getting a little bit of money to pay my, my bills? No, I need to be a blessing there. I need to sh tell them about Jesus. You know, we are like secret agents of God, you know? Wherever you are, you can be a blessing. That's the purpose of the gospel. If we start to, to, to read the Bible from the beginning, since um, we can say like Adam and Eve, they were called from God and God said, I want to make you a blessing through all the world. And also for Abraham, I want you to, uh, you're, I'm going to make a, 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 a big nation from you and they are going to bless all the world. So the purpose of God is not holding, it's not, not taking the, their special people and hiding them from the world. Some people think that God is calling you to go to a, a distant land and hide yourself and get the best vegetarian food and, and live near God. Okay, it sounds gr great, but we have a lot of people to save. Amen. So maybe, okay, you can live there, but come back to the city and try to, to, tell, to talk about Jesus for people. You know, our main purpose is not just to be perfect the way we think. The, 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 the perfect thing that God wants from us is understanding that the core of all gospel is love. It's understanding that we need to love each other. We need to stop faking. We need to really care about others. So we need to understand our purpose as church. We need to understand what 1 Corinthians 13 said. You, you don't need to come there, but I want you to remember that Paul says that I can be the wiser teacher in the world, but if I don't have love, it's like nothing. I can be the most rich person here in this world, but without love, I'm nothing. We need to understand our main purpose as church, as Christians. We need to live as family. You know, some nowadays, it's really hard to reach people in their house. It's really hard, like, we want to meet them, we want to talk to them. It, it seems that we, we fake that we don't have time. We prefer to be alone at home. But we know, we know that we have a need of relationship inside our, inside our hearts. I know because when I look to you here, Sometimes I think, maybe I'm the only one, maybe I don't know if I'm the only one and everyone is okay and I'm the person that miss this relationship. But when I look to everyone's face, whatever country I am when I'm preaching this, I'm sure that everyone is feeling the same. We need each other. We need each other as family. We need each other for all. God made you to be a relationship a relational being, you know, and we need to bring them back to, to home. Amen? So I would like to challenge you. How many of you want to make the difference for these next years? I don't want the church to be the same thing. I don't want the church to be just a fantastic temple with fantastic meetings. I, I want to be a blessing for the others. I want to be a blessing. I want to be a family. I want to take you, everyone here, as my family. I want to have a real relationship with everyone, where we talk, where we smile, where we, we, we share good moments, bad moments also together. We need to be straight with each other, and we need to help to finish what God commanded us. We need to share his gospel with all this city to make them understand that God is coming soon. Amen? Well, I would like to invite you guys also to pray for the last time and ask God to be with us and deliver our hearts to God and be sure that he's the one who can change, who can make a difference here in this situation. Amen? Amen? So I will invite you all to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for all your love and patience with us. You know that everyone here is hurted in a way. I don't know what they're feeling, I don't know where what they are passing through. But I know that 
Everyone here miss you. We want to make a difference as, as a church. We want to see Jesus coming back. And I know that we're living in days that are so hard. It looks that all the things are crazy and we're so afraid that maybe we're not, never coming back to a normal situation. But we know that all these things are happening the way you already told us that it will be in the, the end of the time. So please send your Holy Spirit, burn in your hearts once again, Use your church in this final moment to finish the things that you ask us to do it. Please be with us. Give us strength. Uh, bring warmth to our heart and uh, the sure that all the things are under your control. Please be with us and we ask just in Jesus' name we praise. Amen.